you believe in a physical or interdimensional entity, the devil, Satan, the old serpent, or whether you don't, the elite believe in it and are manifesting it on this planet. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and a lot of people ask me, Alex, I've been listening to your show 20 years. More and more you talk about God, more and more you talk about the devil. And it's because I know a lot more than I knew 20 years ago. And I know that the fake establishment churches are there to discredit Christ. And I'm here to tell you that Christ is my refuge. I'm not one of these Pharisees up on the hill praying publicly, telling you how great I am. Uh, I don't claim to be the best person in the world. I mean, quite frankly, compared to most people, people say you're so moral, you're so nice, you're so friendly, you're so hardworking. You know, still, though, I, I can see into my own heart. I know that I have issues with my conscience. I'm not up here criticizing anybody. I'm not judging you if you've had an abortion. I'm simply saying the globalists are lying to you. It is a human life. It is about dehumanization. It does increase your cancer risk. And for God's sakes, don't have a second or third term one, whatever you do. They're killing tens of thousands of viable babies every year. There's, it's not debatable. And then if you go out and you protest for pro-life, every time I've done it, and I'm, we should do it more often. I hadn't done it in years. We went out and did it last week. Serpents arrive, hissing and saying, we love Satan. And then you go, man, this is real. Because it's, it's not just crazies. I mean, there it's the same all over the country, all over the world. The same, they could be black, they could be white, they could be Hispanic, they could be whatever. Actually, i got to be honest, I don't think I've ever... It's a strange anomaly. I have to think about it more before I talk about it. Uh, you don't see a lot of Satanist Hispanics show up it's talking about how they want to kill babies. I'm sure they exist, but... That, that's an interesting anomaly. They're usually white or black. I, I don't know what that means. It's just in my experience, that's what I've seen. Uh, I guess it's a cultural thing. It's too strong not to kill kids, which is a good thing in that culture. Uh, but it's interesting to study anthropology, sociology, to try to get your mind around all this. But our opposition are evil totalitarians by any name you put on them. As I've said, union psychology, you know, is it a mass consciousness archetype that they resonate towards? I don't even want to call it the dark side because it's beyond the dark side. It's, it's, it's just the death side. All those that hate me love death, Christ said. And just the more I learn, the more I get deep into this, and now I read the Bible, didn't understand it 25 years ago, it all makes sense now. That's what Christ talks about. He says... The general population can hear this and they're not going to understand what I have to say because they're not ready to hear it or they don't have discernment. Or they've turned down the truth so many times when it was obvious that your brain, when you do that, just turns you over to lies. Your brain's a computer. You sit there and feed lies into it enough. I've had folks debate with me that Common Core is good and it teaches 2 plus 2 equals 5. Fritz Springmeyer joins us till five minutes of the next hour. I tend to always do that overdrive now just to finish up any other news. At the bottom of the hour, I'll get into Obama administration to search domination over creeks, streams, wetlands, ditches, even big puddles. And that ties into these executive orders and PDDs I want to go over with you. That's Presidential Decision Directive. Uh, his book was out of print. I thought it was so interesting because I read this probably, I say 15 years ago. I read this book like 18 years ago when it first came out. And I just, quite frankly, read it and showed friends and thought it was humorous. Then I met Fritz Springmeyer, interviewed him. He seemed to know a lot about Bohemian Grove that I had seen that nobody else knew. And then a lot of what was in his book, stuff that I thought was just crazy, like the royal families, the line of Count Dracula, and, uh, you know, and, and, they, and they've got dead babies buried all over their property. And then Prince Charles comes out and says, I am the line of Dracula, and I'm moving to Dracula Castle, and he started our whole British royal family, uh, and we're not even British, and I'm, I live in Transylvania half the year now, and the media goes, we tested their genetics, they're Count Dracula, and we dug up a bunch of dead babies on the property. It, it's kind of like uh, David Icke's like, Jimmy Savelle is a pedophile and has dungeons where he tortures kids to death. And I'm like, delay that, delay that. This is like 14 years ago, and then it all comes out 12 years later. 
So, I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. When people say wild, over-the-top stuff, and then it starts happening, I really start paying attention. So I said, hey, I'll help you reprint this book. So I don't want to say I'm the publisher of it. Fritz Springmeier is, but at least InfoWars did show up somewhere on the fake Bin Laden body doubles reading list. Um, in fact, we put that New York Times reported on. We put the list up there. None dare call it conspiracy you know, stuff like that. Classics, I guess, to demonize the liberty movement. But uh, Bin Laden supposedly was reading Bloodlines Illuminati, available at InfoWarsStore.com exclusively. We also sell it on Amazon, but it's, it's all from here. Uh, Bloodlines Illuminati, big coffee table book. And it is something else. Because, yeah, 18 years ago it first came out. He, he's had a newer edition. I read it, rolled my eyes. Even though some of it I knew was accurate, uh, it just, it's over the top. It is over the top. Infowarstore.com, you help support what Fritz is doing, what we're doing. Uh, the Committee of 300 uh, by Coleman. In fact, let me read some of the stuff that's there. A Brief Guide to Understanding Islam, America's Strategic Blunders, America's War on Terrorism, Al-Qaeda's Online Media Strategies, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, Greg Ballas, The Best Money Enemy Can Buy, The Best Enemy Money Can Buy, Anthony Sutton, Black's Box Voting, Bloodlines Illuminati, Bounding the Global War on Terror, Checking Iran's Nuclear Ambitions, Christianity and Islam in Spain, Civil Disobedience, Civil Democratic Islam, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, a bunch of our guests are on here, Conspirators Hierarchy, The Committee of 300, John Coleman, Crossing the Rubicon, Michael Rupert. There's other stuff in there. But they won't release a supposed porn list. So I haven't talked to Fritz since this came out. I haven't talked to him probably in six months on air. It's about time to get Fritz Springmeier back on. He's been a political prisoner. No criminal record until they set him up for bank robberies of all things. I mean, they could do that to me tomorrow, folks. I'm not going to go over the whole case, but it wasn't true, obviously. Successful author. More than 20 books in print. And uh, they just kept raiding him and raiding him and then said he was a bank robber and had a confidential informant say it. So he's a true political prisoner as well. Uh, he's got a, a website uh, where you can find out more of his information, pintracks.com. Uh, Fritz, great to have you on with us, my friend. What is your take on the bin Laden situation? Uh, what do you think about this? Well, as you know, back in May 2011, we were told that uh, SEAL Team 6 raided and shot him in the, in the head at night and then dumped his body into the ocean and that there was this special extraction team that grabbed up a lot of stuff, shoved it into duffel bags, and they got out of there. And then as you were predicting, you said, there, this, this whole thing is fishy and they're going to kill SEAL Team 6. And then in August 6th, as we know, later that year, they're killed, and just like you had been saying. And so my question is, in light of all this happening clear back in 2011, now why in May 2015 have they come out with this list? Ostensibly, it was because they, they had this... Uh, um, authorization bill by Congress saying that uh, the director of national intelligence had to look at all of the documents and come up with, with some t kind of ruling. But it's really strange. Why now? And so when CBS contacted me about this, I said, why, why are they now saying this? We've got Jade Helm going on. We've got all of these things happening. It's a, uh, interesting the timing that that right at this point in time they decide to come out with sure. uh my book being on the reading list well, we're going to come back and find out why you think it is but one reason i mean obviously they want to demonize but i want to get your take separately it had come out with cy hirsch that the raid was basically fake and then more and more documents were coming out so they put all this out to make it look like there was something legitimate oh okay yeah, uh, there's a lot of questions about how legitimate this is, and not only about the raid, but what they found. I, I, you know, we have heard Lieutenant General Flynn supposedly was opposing 
the Obama administration's take on the documents that were supposedly found. The Obama administration is saying it's showing that al-Qaeda has been defeated and we should, uh, uh, you know, be um, uh, excited that we have this great victory. Sure, sure. Stay there. We're going to get Fritz Springmeyer's take on this. He's a smart fellow. Stay with us. Going back to Fritz Springmeyer, best-selling author. Then he was a political prisoner, Bloodlines of the Illuminati. And we were getting to why does he think, because look, the Bin Laden raid's fake. It's his body double. We know that from the Navy SEALs. I said they'll probably kill them all to cover it up. They blew their helicopter up. This is not fun to be this guy and have Stratford, the CIA, saying they've got to basically discredit me and deal with me. And the fact is, like Jim Garrison said from the Kennedy deal, you got to be so big and in the sunlight's my only hope. Plus, I'm just promoting freedom and liberty, so there's a lot of good people in government as well. Uh, but this is a dangerous situation. I want people to understand that. Fritz, what did, what did you put in this book that made him so mad, and why do you think they've now had the fake bin Laden say that he was reading your book? Well, it's a good book, and it describes who the decision makers are, the important decision makers in the United States. So anybody who's wanting to understand how things are operating is going to want to read the book. Whether uh, that list that was published on May 21st is legitimate or not, it's a good question. Because, you know, uh, you and I, we have to operate on what seems to be the most likely a story. Sometimes we're given information that's fishy. You know, this whole thing about assassinating bin Laden was really fishy. Over in the Middle East, people, uh, it was commonly... Uh, known that he had died. And then there was this whole thing with Tim Osman, as you know, and Gunderson saying he took Tim Osman around and, and on and on. So well, just what is the truth? And, and if it's true that uh, they did not assassinate Osama bin Laden, then that means that all this, all these book lists and everything is hype. And if it's hype, what's the agenda here? Is it to make, uh, is it to link supposed conspiracy theorists with uh, terrorism. You know, uh, uh, John Coleman's Committee of 300s in the same genre as my Bloodlines of the Illuminati, showing who uh, decision makers are. And now the Committee of 300 currently, from my my information that I have, is has been superseded by something else. But the fact remains that this... Uh, this is a book uh, showing who the decision makers have been, and that would be important for anybody who was trying to uh, and have an impact on world affairs. Uh, again, if, if what we believe is, is accurate, that uh, uh, this raid is all a hoax, then uh, it, it, it really begs the question, why are they coming up with this? And we're now facing this Jade Helm, as you know, uh, which is this joint assistance for deployment and extraction, where as you, you know, what, what are, I'm going to interrupt myself by saying one thing I really appreciated was you've been telling the American people that we have lost the Constitution, we, we are in a police state, and this is what they need to recognize. Whether Jade Helm is simply an exercise in bringing in martial law or whether something will happen and it will kick into an actual operation, who knows? Nobody has a crystal ball at this point. But it's definitely an exercise to train the troops in bringing martial law into the United States. And it's definitely so, the biggest I've ever seen. Yeah, and when you have something like this happening, then you have to wonder if this book list that's trying to link um, some of the leading conspiracy historians, I'm a historian, by the way, not a theorist. You, when you read that Bloodlines of the Illuminati book, you'll see it's just chock full of all kinds of history. Genealogy charts, for instance, there's a genealogy chart showing how 25 American presidents are closely related. This is not theory. This is history. By the way, everything in your book on those areas later came out. I mean, that, your book did trailblaze. When did you first publish Bloodlines? In 1995. It was interesting. 
I, I believe it was like 1998 that there was a, a young teenage girl that put some of this genealogy together, and she became a nationally uh, acclaimed. I remember uh, you. I first read your book like in '97, thought, it, and then later a girl figured it out and became famous. Absolutely, yeah. and it's basically your book. Yeah, stay there. Fritz Springmeyer, long segment coming up. We're gonna get his take on all things Illuminati. Stay with us. We're supposedly on the Bin Laden reading list, if you really believe that. I don't know what to make of this. I was told by Navy SEAL and then separately a Navy SEAL family right after this all happened that it was fake. I, of course, had broken 14 years ago with uh, Dr. Pachinik, high-level operative, one of the founders of Delta Force, that he'd already been dead. He'd be rolled out on ice later. Uh, the whole raid was fake. It was a body double. The SEALs thought that. They blew up their helicopter a few months later. Then the families really went public. Some have come on the show after we, of course, had talked to them privately. Some of them will not come on the show. But, I mean, this is not safe. This is not fun. I have responsibility to do this. I just hope everybody realizes this is not a game. We have such credibility on this subject, they have the Central Intelligence Agency trying to discredit us. You guys are crazy. You're funding Al-Qaeda to take down Assad and murder Christians. You've gone too far. You're out of your minds. You're shipping drugs into the country. Stop it, you nuts. You're going to stop yourselves. The corruption's going to stop. It can't go on forever. Somebody's got to say no to you. And where are the ones? And I'm nobody. But you got to deal with God. And you're not God, even if your masters try to play like they're God. And there's a lot of good people in the government, in every agency that know what's happening, probably more awake than the public. That's one reason I'm still alive as well. <sighs> Going back to Fritz Springmeier, you can also support him if you like, plus get amazing books. He's written a whole phalanx of them. And you can find some of those books that are now back in print at pentracks.com, P E N tracks.com. Fritz Springmeyer. Okay, Fritz, I'm ranting here. Uh, I want to put bookends on this Bin Laden thing and to move into other areas. Anything else you'd like to add on that front? Uh, before I throw you the curveball, I always do, so it's not much of a curveball. What are you really focused on? What do you think is interesting right now? Well, one of the things that you've been hammering a lot on, which is important, is globalism. You know, you repeatedly bring up about the globalists, and Americans are still off in La La Land thinking that United States has the sovereignty. You know, the International Organization of Securities Commission regulates our market. And there's a Basel Commission on Banking and the uh, BIS, which uh, Bank of International Settlements. These, uh, the Federal Reserve is part of BIS. It regulates banking. You know, the International Criminal Court of Europe is has jurisdiction over here in the United States. So the American people need to wake up that the the sovereignty of the United States is gone. Global you government's know? not coming, it's here. Exactly. And um, this is the fact. And, and so somebody asked me the other day, somebody close to me, they said, you know, is it possible for the United Nation, uh, the United States get, to get out of the United Nations? They don't understand how so totally entwined everything about United States is. And when it comes to China, United States is deep in debt to China. And they named this operation this summer. They called it Jade Helm. Some people may have been watching the news and seeing that the lunar module that that this rover that went over the surf lunar surface was called Jade Rabbit. That gives you an indication of how how Jade represents China. And I really think that the that the, the I, I think it's a strong possibility that the reason why Jade Helm is called uh, the first word of its Jade is it's referring subtly to China. And uh, the, uh, for instance, one time there was this large 
uh, exhibit, a museum exhibit from China that was allowed to be displayed here in Portland. And the emperors of China considered that jade would give them immortality. It was, jade gives power. Sure, and, I mean, it's, so, the, it's the national rock of China. It's what their dynasties were obsessed with. They believe it's magical. Exactly. So when we, when we have the, the title of this exercise, Jade Helm, Helm being control, so in some way... It means like Jade, Jade Command Center, Jade, uh, Jade Takeover. Yeah. And, and, and so we, uh, we need to be aware that the that, uh, United States has lost its sovereignty. We have countries like China that if our economy starts collapsing, they're going to be trying to figure out how can we get our money out of, extract our, our, our debt out of America. If we look in the- That's right, China the past, is the biggest debt holder of the US. Yes. So if we look at the past as any kind of indication of what's going to happen in the future, after World War I, the British and French just came into Germany, dismantled their factories, and shipped them off to France and Britain. That was the Versailles so, Treaty. Tell folks about that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, due to Germany having surrendered, why the Allies made a very unfair treaty, the Versailles Treaty, where Germany had was was taxed to pay the entire cost of World War One, And of course it put Germany into a tailspin where uh, children and babies in Germany were starving to death. The Germany, German economy was, uh, couldn't pull itself uh, out of the, the problem. And that's what led to Hitler uh, being democratically brought in is is Hitler uh, saved the German people from the the tyranny of the Treaty of Versailles, and, and so these are the kind of things that are done to manipulate world events, and and we likewise will see similar things in our lifetime, and, and so. Uh, the United States is in a precarious position, just like Germany was. That's a smart so, parallel, <laughs> though. I mean, example of the globalism, how they took over Germany, or the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, and broke it up in three pieces and took parts of Germany away, like Danzig and uh, others, and did all that, creating the beefs, then winding up Hitler and turning him loose. What do you make about George Soros and others openly trying to get race riots going, and I'm seeing them openly activate communist cells that are pouring out like roaches out of the walls uh, for this summer. Do you think something big's planned this summer? And George Soros is not just a, a common everyday person. As you know, he's very influential. And being a student of, uh, who studied the Illuminati, he's a member of the Illuminati too. So when you watch what he's doing, you can see but uh, you can see the Illuminati's agenda, and you're you're very correct at bringing out what he's doing, because this is a uh, it, it shows that we've got the manipulation of events, uh, you know, riots and so forth that we've been seeing, so that the United States is slowly or maybe not so slow, depending on your perspective, is descending into chaos and. Uh, the, the things that protect us from totally uh, collapsing into anarchy are, are being, those pillars of support, so to speak, are being dismantled. And, and so, yeah, the, the American people are entering into a very precarious time. And how much longer people like you and I are going to be out here with the freedom to give an alternative message is, that's a good question. That was my next question. I just love how you were right on target with my next question. We're seeing massive censorship. Hey, a Marine can't, you know, have a Bible verse on their computer about no weapon formed against me will prosper. Uh, you can't have, you know, I'm pro-life on your on your uh, license plate. The court says it's hateful. Uh, we, we see the left going from be tolerant of what we want to now you'll do what we say. I don't even call them the left. I see the internet kill switch being openly announced that we told people about 10 years ago, accelerated by Obama. I see uh, the borders being liquidated. Uh, I see all these calls for censorship. 
calls for us to be shut down, on, you know, and that I shouldn't have free speech on this week on ABC. Uh, I mean, let me tell you, it's creepy when every major TV news show says I'm a horrible person but won't say what I said or misrepresents. And, and then I know used to they used to try to set me up, Fritz, and say, let's attack the State Department, let's blow this up. And I'd say, come on, you're a cop, you're a fed, get a camera, and then, you know, they would get mad and run off. They've kind of backed off. They had me physically attacked. I know they tried to frame me quite a few times. They've kind of not done that in a while because I never fell for any of it. I know from your story, I followed it in the newspapers. They just kept raiding you, claiming you were dealing drugs. You had no criminal record, no drugs, big Christian. Finally, they just grab you, have an informant with a long record of lying, say you robbed a bank with no evidence. I know they basically tortured you with what they fed you and stuff in prison for a decade. I, I really ask, you know, did... Did they warn you beforehand, back off, or we're going to do this? Because they used to call me up, you know, phone would ring, there'd be no number on the caller ID, and they'd say, we're going to kill you or put you in jail if you don't shut up. I'd say, well, do whatever you have to. I, I can't, you know, be part of these lies. But I've been left alone so far, except for dirty tricks and stuff. I, is it because I got big enough they don't know what to do? Uh, or because I like talking to you because you've been through the ringer. I mean, you're a true political prisoner, like out of the New Testament or something. What do you think about my situation? Because obviously I think about it a lot because, I mean, I'm getting, let's not exaggerate, 10 times the demonization, 15 times that I ever got before. And when you've got the host of ABC Nightly News, the host of CBS News, t saying my name as if he's speaking the name of some Attila the Hun or something, uh, you know, with their back all straight like they're talking. I mean, they're like alerting their own minions that I'm so evil. Uh... That's that's really creeping me out because first they try to assassinate your name before they assassinate you. Right. Well, they realize that we're at least from their perspective that we're all going to get our comeuppance. Going back to something what you said earlier, the general principle is as evil always contains the seed of its own destruction. So these people are on a collision course with uh, what they're doing. And, uh, you know, they're, in, they're, they're looking at us as we're the ones that are, are going to get the come up and we're, we're going to be taken down. But the truth is, is they also are, are going to be taken down because their own deeds, uh, like you were saying about these intelligence operatives, it's going to collapse on them. In fact, the revolution always eats its own children. So, yeah, as far as, as what I foresee happening to you i think that that uh for you and i we will we're going to be out left out here until there's a general uh can i say a roundup where where we're just included with the general um arrest of of people that's right we won't be targeted to elevate us into martyrs we'll be scooped up in well, the major purge right we'll just disappear quietly some night so, um, so, so we're the canary in the coal mine. <laughs> yeah. Growing up, did you ever imagine you'd be in this bizarre position? I mean, for folks that don't know or other people that are jealous of you or I because we get a lot of attention, I don't think they get. This is not fun at one level. For me, it's a duty. I've got to do it. I mean, I can't just lay down to being taken over. It's an instinct. What is it for you? Well, it was a calling. I, I felt a calling from God and and the original uh, calling I received was back in 1978. And after about a year of, of doing what I thought I was called to do, I actually tried to avoid it for about 10 years. So um, I, ha I was a little bit like Jonah, where I saw that I needed to warn people, but I backed off for 10 years and then realized, you know, this is what I'm called to do. And I just need to uh, buckle down and do it. Um, and, and again, after did it feel being, better once you just submitted to God's will and did it? Yes, uh, but you know, after you've been in prison for eight years, it's it's uncomfortable to come out of prison and having experienced all of that and jump right back and get back into things. You did seem shell shocked at first, but you're back, Fritz. Yeah. <laughs> I'd yeah, say you're I, back about 80%. I mean, you used, I mean, you still have, you have a powerful presence now, but you used to have a really a powerful presence in person and, and on air and stuff, and you still do, but I could tell it really tore you up in prison. Yeah, it, it, everybody's going to 
and get uh, um, after being knocked around a little bit, it, you know, it takes a little bit out of you. But um, I, I'm here and I'm continuing to do what I feel I was called. To you know, do. the look you have in your eye is like those guys that would be in a Viet Cong prisoner of war camp. It show photos or film before and then after when they walked out with that shell shock look. That's the look you had in your eyes when you came out of prison. It's almost gone. It's still there. I'm not insulting you. We've been praying for you. But it's obvious they did a lot of bad stuff to you, brother. We'll be back. So they they all have their talking point that I'm bad before they do something. So just pray for us. Uh, but, but the danger I feel in my gut isn't just, just for InfoWars. The evil is moving into an accelerated, I use that word every hour, a super acceleration. And I'll ask Fritz Springmeier of Bloodlines Illuminati fame this question. Are they accelerating because they're desperate? Are they accelerating because they're arrogant? Are they accelerating because they believe enough of the public is in a trance? Or is it a combination of all three? What is the state of the new world order right now? All three. They're arrogant. They don't think that uh, they can be... Uh, knocked out of their position of power, that their power is so embedded in the warp and woof of society that no matter what happens, they're, they're going to stay in power. And they also are jittery. The fact that you look at how large scale Jade Helm is, the, the flip side of that is, is that actually is encouraging. It shows how uh, terrified they are of the real Americans, the American patriots. And um, back when you were uh, at uh, West Point, did you ever hear of any drills like this? No, no. And then you have this West Point uh, combating terrorism center, which w got involved for the Obama administration. They didn't even have anything like that when I was at West Point. And, and, and the Obama administration has taken out all references to the in the Quran of fighting jihad. They've eliminated all of the references in their training manuals about air, uh, Islamic terrorism, supposedly we have won. And so... Oh, now they right, say it's the Christian and the, and the veterans the enemy. Yeah. I mean, this stuff is so over the top. How do they get away with it? Because people are, are just so focused on trying to, to uh, live paycheck to paycheck that they're, they're not really monitoring sensibly what's going on uh, but their their lives are at stake we're we're in a situation uh, you know prior to war, just similar to prior to world war ii when when the war broke out and you have germany under uh, uh in, in a sense martial law situation people now have lost all civil rights that's where we're at right now and people really need to start waking right. up pulling their head out of the sand, um, we're, we're, we're at a very critical time, point in time. Um, what do you think the next big shoe or shoes to drop are going to be? Well, the, uh, the, the second in command at the IMF, and Christine Lagarde is, is Illuminati. She's the head of the IMF. And she has this Chinese doctor who's her second in command. He has gone around and told people that the IMF this year will announce that China has been upgraded to one of the nations with a reserve currency status. So uh, that is projected to happen in October. If, if that does happen in October, we're going to uh, see some major problems for for the american dollar and uh uh yeah china is just really pushing hard to become reserve currency status that's right and everything's I coming into place it's kind of like when you've been doing the jigsaw puzzle in the last 15 pieces or so it's bam 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 you start slamming them in five minutes of overdrive and that's it for the transmission infowars.com forward slash show folks spread the word don't take the broadcast for granted please pray for us and support our local affiliates god bless you for $15 an hour, unions to likely increase their dues as businesses shut down. Minnesota teachers compared to KKK during white privilege training. That's Infowars.com. You cannot make this stuff up. Uh, Obama is taking over all water, including puddles in your backyard, claiming it's federal jurisdiction. 
I'm going to cover this more tomorrow. I didn't get to it. Emergency powers give Barack Obama authority over just about everything during a major national crisis. You can read the PDD 51 for yourself and HSPD 20. Catastrophic emergency means any incident, regardless of location, that results in extraordinary levels of mass casualties, damage, or disruption, severely affecting U.S. population, infrastructure, environment, economy, or government functions. It covers all scenarios. And then it gets into some other ones. So just know this stuff's out there. Fritz, they're really building up. Uh, the hype in the movies, TV, the pre-programming for a war against patriots. Are you concerned about false flags, just like you were set up on a, on a micro scale, uh, on the macro scale? Are you worried about false flags? Because I see that as a good move for the globalist. Uh, they haven't done it yet uh, domestically, I think, because they know there's so many people watching, and they're worried it won't fly. What do you think, Fritz? I think that the chance of some more false flags is probably 100%. And uh, I, I would expect that. What's uh, What I have found interesting is not that they have done these, because uh, I realized that they were going to do these clear back in the early 90s. But what's been amazing is, is that people like yourself have been calling them on it, have been exposing them, you know, exposing how... The, the Boston Marathon thing was done with actors and so forth. And so they're, they're not getting by with all of this. And uh, um, so, so that's the positive side of it. Certainly is. we got two minutes left. Uh, final comments, anything else you'd like to add? Again, Fritz Springmeyer, author of Bloodlines of the Illuminati, available exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. People need to... Uh, not fear what's happening in the future, but be concerned enough that they do the things that's going to mitigate, uh, you know, to, to throw your hands up and say, well, there's no hope or nothing that you can do is, is not the correct attitude. And I know on your show, you're, you're constantly telling people, you know, what they can do to help, you know, colloidal silver and some of these other things. These things will go a long ways towards mitigating the problems that are coming, and people should uh, pay attention and uh, continue to stay informed and not allow themselves to be paralyzed with fear, but realize Absolutely. that um, the, it's just like in the Civil War, one of the great lessons Ulysses Grant learned uh, early on in the war, that the enemy was just afraid, as much afraid of him as he was of them. So uh, uh, keep the courage, be c courageous, be of good courage, people. Pentracks.com to find your other books. The, absolutely. You know, I, I talk about things from my perspective, and people say, man, why are you fear-mongering? Why are you trying to scare folks? See, if I hear about something scary happening, if my neighbor calls and says, I just saw some guy breaking in your back door, I'm not going to tell the neighbor, how dare you try to scare me? I'm going to say, thank you, Bob, or thank you, David, or thank you, you know, whoever, and I'm going to get my gun. And so for me, I just want to know this is happening. I think other people want to know it's happening. Uh, we can't magically think here and just think if we out of sight, out of mind, ostrich with their head in the ground, that it's all going to go away. It's not. It's going to get worse. And so we're here as modern-day Paul Revere's. You, the listeners, are just as important as we are, more so, ringing the alarm. So don't take it for granted what Fritz has gone through, what others have gone through, what we've gone through to a lesser extent to bring you this information. Thank you, Fritz Springmeyer. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. Pentracks.com. That's a site.